want to go home. Hey everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Cyber Hero, and we're sitting here with Kyle. <laughs> we're about to show our survival guide to Halloween Horror Nights 30. But before we get into that, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and make sure you guys hit the bell. The bell. <laughs> the bell icon if you guys want to get notified when I do my uploads. If you guys like anything horror or gaming related, pretty much anything variety, you're going to love this channel. So thank you guys so much. And make sure you guys go check out my Twitter and Instagram. I will leave those down in the description below. But let's go ahead and get into the guide. That we have for you is to find a night that you can afford to go each night at Halloween Horror Nights uh, different nights are different prices if you're looking to save money go during the week that is usually when the prices are cheapest also if you're wanting to uh, go when there's not as many crowds September is probably your best option and we've noticed that through the years that we have been able to go by October a lot of the scare actors are into the gist or into their character already so usually the scares are a little bit more better in October plus it's getting closer and closer to the Halloween so a lot of people get excited you know the scare actors get more involved and into their character uh, but if you can only afford you know a little bit to go and still want to experience it September is not a bad time to go but make sure you plan ahead of time on the financial side because there's a lot of things that you can buy and do while at, while at Halloween Horror nights that you might want to enjoy doing while there. Our, our second tip is to Wait, do that again. I'm <laughs> like this, bro. Our, our second tip is to arrive earlier to City Walk and to the front gates of uh, Universal to uh, experience the opening ceremony. Usually you want to go really early in the day because you got all these super fans that will go and sit at the front gates for the opening ceremony like us, like us. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to be able to be able to experience that because that's especially if you go like opening night or something like that that is when all the actors give their energy they put their energy out and do a big show for you and also if you're uh, there earlier you get to experience the houses first you get the front of the line basically to wherever you want to go so and beans and being scare actors as ourselves because we work at a, a haunted house it is nice to see these actors in their full portrayal of their characters and stuff right away because they're so excited to start the night probably more excited than you are to get scared so yeah. uh so just keep that in mind when you are trying to plan your day out to go i'm running late it's nine o'clock hey. number three which actually should probably be number two uh <laughs> To make sure to find a hotel that maybe is close to Universal. A lot of people say that it's nice to be closer to Universal during this time because a lot of those hotels have shuttles to go to Halloween Horror Nights so you don't have to pay for parking every single day that you go. Right, and, and especially with it ending at like 2 a.m. and if you're drinking and all that kind of stuff, the best thing to do is have a hotel that you can either walk to or take a shuttle to because I know you're going to be tired after walking through Universal for that long. Definitely. Oh, that was oh. a great Horror Nights. Yeah, man. <laughs> So how long till we get to the hotel? I think it's like an hour. Fuck! And also some of the resorts will offer Halloween Horror Nights things, like I know Cabana Bay this year is doing an experience like they did for 29. It's just if you can get in those resorts, you can't you, <laughs> if you can get that <laughs> just if you can get oh my god. <laughs> just if you can get in those resorts, it's a really cool experience, but obviously it comes down to finances. Our fourth tip is to prepare to be scared. Alright, a lot of people don't realize that this event is actually more geared towards adults than human- <laughs> <laughs> Is more geared towards adults than- Why can't I f say children, bro? More geared towards adults than children. They even put down in the description that it's not suitable for kids over a certain age. So, when you're going yourself, if you know you get terrified very easy and run through haunted houses and stuff, you're not able to do that here. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can, but it's, it's stupid if you do. There's some people that will go and be like, is there a break area? Sure, there's break areas, but you're there for the event to be scared. You're there to not run through a haunted house, that kind of thing. If, you, if you're if you going to a Halloween event, expect it to be a Halloween event is kind of what we're saying. Exactly. You're there to get scared. I mean, that's what you're going for is the haunted experience. So, you know, it, 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 there's a lot of... <laughs> There's a lot of macho men out there. Well, I'm gonna tell you what, <laughs> you're gonna get scared here. I'm just telling you that ahead of time. I wanna go home. 
so our fifth tip is to actually take your time. A lot of other channels and uh, guides and like articles will tell you to make sure you run to your first house when you get there. Don't actually do that because with how long Horror Nights, uh, Universal itself takes to build this event, I think it's always good to just appreciate every single set piece that you see because someone was in a, a sound stage back there painting that set piece. They were building those, <clears throat> building those scare zones for you, not for you to just run through and go to your most wanting to see haunted house. You'll get there. You can, if you have Express Pass, you'll get there faster, I guess. But it, at the end of the day, there is tons of people on the creative team. There's tons of people, team members in general, that built this event for like three months. There's people that have been planning this event since last event, since 2019's event that are wanting to make this event good for you guys and then just don't want you to run through. Plus, if you're only able to go for a couple days at a time, you know, it, especially from people out of state, you know, you might only be able to go one night and you don't want to waste that night by running through everything. Right. You want to experience the full experience. Number six we have as plan your night out. Um, there's kind of controversy when it comes to this because you can if you want, but then again, that kind of falls under our take your time. If you have a plan, great. If not, then do what you want to do. See what you want to see and go where you want to go. And just going off of past experiences of us going to Horror Nights, we've actually always have taken our time. Mm -hmm. uh, we've always been able to get through every single haunted house in the night, as long as you don't choose to ride the rides. Right. Um, you know, me personally, when I go to Horror Nights, I don't ride the rides because I'm more focused on being there for Horror Nights. Uh, I can always go back, but I also live in Florida, so I also know like some people might enjoy the rides. Uh, in that aspect, I would recommend and doing at least two nights so that way you can actually focus on riding the rides but also have a good time at horror nights and not running through everything our seventh tip of the day is that we want to tell you eat when the lines are the longest and usually this is around what 9 to 11 o'clock p.m probably, probably around that um time. a lot of the lines start getting longer that's usually the peak time of people coming in uh those big ip haunted houses are gonna be freaking packed so this is the best time to go pick up some pizza fries or yeah. you know go go get yourself a drink you know Take that time, go watch a show. You know, those little, those occupancies are open more for the shows because there's so much more people that can go in at a time. So you might be able to catch that kind of stuff during the times when the haunted houses are full. And even in line, I know from past uh, Horror Nights we went to, there is trash cans actually throughout line. So if you want to get some, uh, like a Twisted Tater or some pizza fries or something like that, and you can eat it in the line and drop it off at a trash can while you're in line if you want to do that as well. Oh gosh, I'm so hungry, man. Yeah, but let's go through this haunted house first. How long is the wait time for the haunted house? And number eight, we have actually don't punch or just touch the characters or anything like that. Us being characters ourselves, we really understand this. <laughs> um, they're there to do their job. They're there. The whole reason they're doing this is to jump at you and scare you. They enjoy horror nights much more probably than you do. <laughs> and they're just doing their job. They're not here to get punched. They're not gonna actually hurt you. They're not allowed to touch you. And the thing is, if you punch a character, then you probably shouldn't be there. <laughs> you probably won't be there for long. <laughs> yeah, you will get thrown out of the park. <laughs> so another tip that we have for today's video is the, the Express, Express Pass, Pass is ass. ass. <laughs> I have actually have experience getting the Express Pass. I know a lot of people try to get those Express Passes at theme parks in general. My experience with the Express Pass, it was a waste of money for me. Uh, like we were talking about, we get through a lot of the haunted houses already. Uh, and we go in one day, one night, and we finish everything in one night. And we don't get the Express Pass. As long as you're okay waiting in line, I mean, like we were talking about, you want to enjoy the ambience, you want to enjoy the experience while you're there. So don't waste money on the Express Pass, I'm telling you right now. Now, if you're going for one night, and maybe you only can go for one night, and you're from out of state or out of the, uh, the country even, it might be better to just get the express pass for that day so that way you know you're gonna make it through everything you're gonna make it through all the rides you know so if you're going for one night that might be beneficial to you if you plan on going multiple nights just ride off the lines <laughs> just yeah. ride off the lines and actually the cool thing with being in lines actually myself I like even staying in the lines that's why I've never gotten express pass myself is because you get like for example if you go to like a sound stage uh, house that they built you can actually go behind the scenes, basically it feels like, of the, the resort, to be honest, and you'll see all the back lots and stuff, and I thought that was always cool, oh, yeah. waiting in line. Yeah. Oh, it's 6.30 and I'm already finished. You have an express pass, don't you? Yeah. And one of the final tips that we have for this video today is 
check out the Halloween Horror Nights Tribute Store. The Tribute Store changes based off what is trending in the park at the time, and right now it has just been revamped for Halloween Horror Nights, so I'm very excited. That's where a lot of your merch is gonna come from, uh, you know, limited time edition pins, stuff like that, lanyards, anything Halloween Horror Nights merch that you wanna take home with you. In this tribute store, there's a lot of photo opportunities here where you can go take pictures with maybe the, the static props and the decor that they have all decorated throughout the store. I know it's one of my favorite places to take photos at, so I know you guys would enjoy it as well. Which brings us to an extra tip. Make sure you have room on your camera. <laughs> Make sure you have room on your phone, whatever it is that you're gonna be taking pictures of, because there's a lot, if you're really into horror stuff or you're just into any kind of theme park things, most of you guys are probably gonna be taking pictures, so make sure you have that space on whatever device you decide to use. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully these, this beginner survival guide helped you guys plan your day at Halloween Horror Nights 30 this year. And if you guys are excited as us, man, I know you guys are gonna have a grand freaking time, dude. Make sure you guys go check out this video right here. This is what YouTube recommends. And then check out this video right here because this is what the hero recommends. You know, if I recommend it, you're gonna freaking love it. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys leave a like and drop a comment down below of maybe a question that you have from a past Halloween Horror Nights that maybe we can answer or another tip or trick that you have that maybe someone else doesn't know in the comments. But until the next video, see you in the fog. Universal's Halloween Horror Nights, back for the 30th year of fear. Brace yourself for Netflix's The Haunting of Hill House, Beetlejuice, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and more.